I have an awesome video for you today. In this video, we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial in Photoshop so that you can design this t-shirt. It's gonna be an amazing video and it's gonna be really, really detailed, but not too long so that you know exactly how to design it and I'm really excited to show it to you. Now, this could work in Affinity Designer, in GIMP, in Photoshop, in pretty much all the designing platforms. I'm just going to be showing you how I would do it in Photoshop because that's what I have here. But if you wanna see how to do it in Affinity Designer as well, I've also got Affinity Designer. So let me know in the comments down below. So here we have the design. It's a very simple design. Dad, we have tried to find the best gift for you, but we, have already, but we already belong to you. Perfect design. And just so you know, this can be replaced with mum, with grandpa, with pops, with papa, with every single type of name that you can have for a dad, a grandpa, a mum, a brother, whatever it may be you know, it's fine. And you can just, if it's like brother, you can just change belong to you and just do, but we already have you, right? Something like that. Anyways, this is the design. The first thing we need to do is talk about the font. So the font is Bebas New. And I, I can just tell that it's Bebas New um, just from looking at it because I've done a lot of different things with this particular font. But if you can't figure out the font, you just have to go to the website, what the font, right? You have to just put a screenshot in and I'm gonna actually show you. And we can see the first one is literally Bebas New and then you've got all the different types of Bebas New, right? So this is a really good website and they know what they're talking about. So once we have the font, we then have to have a look and see if we can distress the font. Okay, so you can see how it's slightly distressed. I mean, the ribbon's a bit distressed, but some of the font is a bit distressed over here, you know, up here, right? It's a bit distressed. Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how to distress this font. And very, very simply, what we can do is we can just get the paintbrush tool over here. We can go to mode and we can go to clear. This is important. And then we can select the brush, right? So if you want your tools to show up over here on the right hand side, you just have to go to windows and then click it over here and it just shows up. Now we're gonna go for this kind of splattered effect and you can see like this. And then it's just a matter of, then it's just a matter of picking that layer, you know, and like kind of, kind of just rubbing her out and making it a bit distressed. Now that's a bit more distressed than it probably is. And more than the font being distressed, it's more the ribbon being distressed, but that's kind of how you do it. Again, really, really simple. I've got all my layers over here, by the way. And if you wanna add a new, a new text layer, you just have to click the text over here, drag, and then, you know, hi, this is a text layer. And now you can see how, you know, it's all overlapping itself like this. So you just have to quickly select all you have this paragraph character, paragraph and character tab over here. And this one over here, you can just make it slightly bigger, right? And then you can see how it spreads itself out. Again, really, really easy. Right, now that we've talked about the slightly distressed font, we need to discuss the graphics, okay? So these are the graphics. You've got a ribbon, you've got a dot, and you've got these triangle things. And you can see that's all that we really have over here, right? We've got the triangle things, the dots and the ribbon. And we've also got those two lines, which I've, I've put one line over there. Now, when it comes to getting graphics, you could either make them in Photoshop or you can get them from many websites, like Vexels, Canva, Creative Fabrica. There are so many websites where you can get graphics. Just make sure you're allowed to use them in your design. And I guess because, you know, the graphic is just a small part of a much larger design, it should be absolutely fine. Now, let me just quickly show you how to create some of these graphics in Photoshop. So the dot, for example, we need to right click this rectangular marquee tool and click elliptical marquee tool. And then we can hold down on shift and um, option if you're using a Mac and you can see how it snaps to a circle. So if I'm not holding down, I've got to kind of like find the circle, but as soon as I hold down shift, it snaps to a circle and option snaps to the middle. So we just really need to hold down on shift, right? And you can see once you've got that, you need to create a new layer it's down here at the bottom corner, right next to the, the, the bin, you've got a new layer. And then we need to go to the paintbrush tool and select a color. So if we wanna select a specific color, we can hold down option and you can see this thing comes up where we can select a color and it goes to red, white, black. And then we need to just paint over it. Now bear in mind, you need to change from clear to normal because obviously you, you want to actually paint something here and you wanna go for just a normal brush. And then there we go. 
really simple, creating a dot. The same thing goes for a line. So we'd right click, rectangular marquee tool, and drag it out. Now, if you want the line to be a specific shape, we can hold down shift as well, and now it'll be a square. Or if we hold down on option, it kind of makes it, you know, easier to work with. But again, with a square, you can just, you can just draw a line there very simply, move it around, and the same thing goes with just painting over it, right? And now you've got your line. So that's creating a circle and a line. Now, creating these triangle things, I use something slightly different. I use this one, which is the pen tool. Now the pen tool is something where you can draw, you know, fancy lines and do all of that. But what we want to do is because there is a slight downwards angle over here, you can see, right, there's this angle down here. I've kind of bent it a tiny bit and you can see I've bent it just over there. Let me zoom in and show you. Right, you can see that that slight bend over here. So this is really easy to make. Let me show you. So you make the first dot, you go, you know, wherever you think, and then you'd slightly angle it up, okay? And then you would come up here and make the next dot. And then you'd go there, right? And there you have it. Right, once you have your your square, let me do one second. Once you have your triangle, you need to, well, weird triangle, you need to right click and click make selection, right? And then you just click okay, make sure the feather radius is on zero and then click okay. And now you've got your selection here. All you have to do is paint over it. Super easy, right? I know it's not exactly the same as that, but it's, it's the same idea, right? That is exactly how I made it. All right, and then the ribbons, I got these ribbons from Canva. I was able to use, well, I've got the Pro account, but I was able to download the graphics, save it as a transparent background, and put it here in Photoshop. But again, you can get your ribbons from absolutely anywhere. The next thing we need to figure out are the colors. So again, what we can do is we can go onto the paintbrush tool, we can hold down Option over the T-shirt, and we can select that color. So we can see we're selecting red or black or white, right? Or maybe it's a weird kind of gray. So what we've done here is we've got those two colors, the red color and the gray color. And now let's actually create the design. So I haven't created the design because I want to create it with you right here on the computer. Okay, let's create the design. First, I'm going to just change this color, this background to black, just so I can see what I'm working with here. Right now I've got a clearly defined canvas. We need to actually get started with the design. So first things first, let's put the text in. So dad, now obviously that's the wrong color, it's black. So all we have to do is select this color over here and we can go up there and select the color. Or like I said, we can go and select the actual color just by holding down on option, right? And then we'll select the color. Right, once we've done that, we need to actually pick the right font because this is the wrong font. The font here is a Bebas New Regular, okay? And then what we need to do is make it quite a bit bigger, I think, right? Yeah, let's make it a bit bigger, right? And there we have that, okay? So again, we're not gonna distress anything yet. We're gonna do that all the way at the end. And in terms of adding graphics, the only graphics we're gonna add at the, mo at the meantime are the ribbons. Okay, so now we need to go and grab our ribbons. Now, again, you can get these from anywhere, but I've just got mine from Canva. Right, let's make these bigger. Not so big though. Okay, make sure it's centered. You can see the purple lines show, where, show you where it's centered. All right, and now I actually want to get rid of this dot and I want to make this its own layer. So what I can do is if I wanna make a part of the image's own layer, I need to just select around it and click Command J. And what that does is you can see there's a layer now that's popped up over there, layer six, and that will just have this in it in itself. So what I can now do is I can delete this from the first layer, and now I'm working just with that. Now we need to change the color of this. So what we need to do is we need to double click and it opens up this window, right? And then what we can do is go to color overlay, and now you can see it's selected this color. But what we want to do is select this red. So I need to click that, and it shows me this eyedropper tool, right? This color dropper. So I'm gonna select this red, click OK, and now we can see we've got a perfect color match there, right? That's the red. Next thing we have to do is we have to put in we have tried. That's the next part of the design. So let's put in we have tried, Okay, let's make this slightly smaller so it fits. And now what we have to do is we actually have to arch it. And arching is actually really easy on Photoshop. All you have to do is click this our list like arching text symbol over here, right? And then this will bring up this, this warp text. Now we need an arc, 
and you can see, well, it's arced it slightly too much. So we need a very, very slight arc to go with the writing, right? And now we can change the size of the font so that it fits in a bit better. We can move it about, right? And I still think it's a bit too big. So let's make the font slightly smaller. There you go, oh, that's nice, I like that a lot. Okay, now one thing on the design is this, this text is actually deleted from the graphic. So there isn't a color, right? So on the design, you can see it's black over here, right? You can see the black. Now, they haven't actually done black text. What they've done is they've just deleted the color. So what we can do is we can hold down on command. Now, if you have a, a, um, a PC, it's whatever the equivalent of a command of the command button is, but hold down on command and click the text thing over here. And you see how that selects it. Now what we can do is we can go to that layer, which is this one, right? You can see when I hide it, it's this one. And we can go to the rubber tool. And very simply, right, we can see we have that selection there for us. And now let's just make this a bit bigger and a bit harder. And now we just have to rub away. And how cool is that, right? That's really, really easy, right? Really, really easy. And again, don't worry about the distress stuff. We are going to add that later. Now, the next thing we need to do is add the next bit of text. The next bit of text is to find. So let's go and add another bit of text. Now we could copy and paste dad and just keep doing it like that. And that's simple. So you can see the dad um, layer over here. We can just drag this to that plus button and it will duplicate it. And now I can just click that and go to find and then I can drag this down, okay? Now don't worry, sizing, everything, all the bits that's gonna make it perfect, that's gonna happen near the end, right? For now, I'm just laying down the groundworks of this design. Okay, so we've got that, right? And now we need to put in the best gift. So let's put in the best gift. And now we need the next part, oh no, not yet. We need the best gift for you. We need the next part of our ribbon. So let's go back to graphics folder over here. And we have layer six. So let's turn this ribbon back on. We are going to do the same thing with the colors. So let's double click this, go to color overlay, and we can see it gets the red color that we need. And then we just have to select the, you know, the select tool, the move tool, and drag it down. And again, you can see all these purple lines that make sure it's all centered really nicely. And then we've got the next bit of uh, text put in, which is, but we already, okay? So let's put, but we already, we can put that in there. And guess what we have to do next? We have to now arc it again. So if we click the arc button, right? We can go to arc, except now we need to arc it the other way. So let's minus it down a bit. And I think that is good. And now we can drag it up and put it in there. And to be honest, I think it could even be arced a bit more. So let's just click that again. Arc it a bit more, there you go, that's perfect. Right, and now we have to remove this, this, you know, font, this, this text from the actual ribbon, okay? Because remember, we're not actually putting text on the ribbon, we're deleting the text from the ribbon. So again, hold down on command if you have a command, if you have a Mac, click that and it will select that uh, text. Now we can just click the eye tool, the eye thing over here to hide it, and now we can see we've got this, this area already selected. So now all we have to do is go over to layer six, which is our bottom ribbon, and in fact we can name that bottom ribbon, and we can just go back to the, the erase tool, the rubber tool, where's the, there's the rubber tool, and get rid of it. Really, really easy, okay? Now all we need to do is add belong to you. Okay, so again, this is also arc, arced. So let's put belong to you, and let's arc this just a tad. Again, arcing is just done at the top, and you can change the size of the font to make it bigger, to make it smaller, you know, to really make it work with the design. Okay, but that in my mind is absolutely perfect. And now we've done the whole design, let's add in the rest of the graphics and center it all and just make it absolutely perfect. So first things first, let's go and select dad. It's a bit too big and it doesn't need to be that big. So let's make it a bit smaller. 
Right, we've got that there. Perfectly centered in the middle because the purple line showed us. Now what we need to do is we need to grab those graphics, which is these graphics over here. Now, if you were to make them, like I said before, you can use the pen tool or you can just use the um, polygon, polygonal lasso tool and actually just, you know, do an arrow like that. Both work, makes a selection, and then you just have to click the, the brush tool and actually brush something over. Now, if you get this, you know, this, this kind of thing showing up where it looks like I can't do anything, and then it says, this type layer must be rasterized. So all you have to do is make sure you created a new layer, which is just that plus button in the bottom right corner, and now I can paint over it, right? And you can see that that's absolutely perfect, but we're going to use the ones that we've already created just because I like them the most. So all I have to do is find them, and it's this one. So all I need to do is click the move tool and then go down here and add it. Now you can see the colors are a bit wrong. It's a bit small. So let's make it slightly bigger. And everyone knows how to change the colors now because we've done this. You just have to double click and do a color overlay. And now it's the exact same red as this red. Now what we need to do is because there are three, we need to duplicate this. And duplicating this is just dragging it and going to the duplicate at the bottom, right? And then duplicating this one more time, and then we can center them all, make them all perfect. So we can use the arrows to kind of really get in and, and center them perfectly. Make sure it's absolutely perfect. Right, and there we go. That, in my mind, looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is, well, we're gonna make it all a bit smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of them, right? So you can see I've selected them all over here on the right hand side. And we're just going to drag and make them slightly smaller. Now I need to duplicate these three and flip it. So all I need to do, you can see I've selected them over here. I can just click drag all three over here and it's now duplicated, right? And now I need to go over to edit. I need to go to um, transform and then I need to flip horizontal. Okay, once I've done that, I can drag it over and I'm gonna have to eyeball this a bit, but you can see the purple lines are telling me where, you know, if it's in line with the other one, but it's not telling me the, the spacing, but I think that spacing looks pretty, pretty accurate. Right, the next thing we need to do is mess around with the too fine because this is too big, it's not really centered and I need to just make it look a bit better. So let's center this. So let's center this with dad. So if I center this with dad, I put it all the way up here, we can kind of see there, that's centered with dad, right? So let's move this down and we keep that centering. Okay. There we go, we have our centering with dad, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to add the dots. Now, instead of using the dots that we used before, I'm just going to make new ones because it's so quick and easy to make new dots. So right click your rectangular marquee tool in the top left and click elliptical marquee tool. And now make, make sure to hold down on shift and just make a circle, right? Again, really easy. Now all we need to do is make another layer. So our layers are getting a bit messy here, but that's absolutely fine. That's just how I work. Click a new layer, go to the paintbrush tool, Make sure to hold down option and do the eyedropper so that you can get the right color. And now all we have to do is paint that in. We have that one, now we need to duplicate it. So we know we have to drag that layer down to the plus button. We need to go and click the move tool on the top left. And then we need to just drag it over, okay? And again, very simply, that's what it will look like, right? Now we can make it, move it closer, further, anything like that. But that I think is absolutely fine. Now, I want to move this whole thing over a tiny bit. And then let's move over this one a tiny bit. Right, that so far is looking pretty good, pretty accurate. Now the next bit is the best gift. Now the best gift, let's find that and make that slightly bigger because that is obviously, you know, a lot bigger. So we can make it bigger by either stretching it out or actually just increasing the font. We're gonna increase the font because it's quicker and smoother on this computer, right? Once we've done that, we need to then add our lines. So again, I'm not going to copy the lines from before. I'm just going to make new lines because it's so quick and easy. So back again at the rectangular marquee tool, you know, just find the edge and drag it across and make yourself a line. Now you can move this by just hovering over and you can see the plus button or 
you can use the arrows to move it. Now let's add another one with the plus over there and paint it in red. Now we want to make the exact same one here. So we're going to duplicate this rather than try again and make the exact same one. We're going to duplicate it and drag it down and you can see it will be perfectly in line with the purple arrows, with the purple lines I should say. Right, so far so good. Now I think there should be a bit more spacing. So we're gonna bring it down a bit more. We're going to move the best GIF down more into the middle. And now let's let's perfect the for you bit. So for you has to be the same size as the to find, right? Well, I think it should be the same size anyway. So let's make this a bit smaller. And that in my mind is a pretty much the same size. Let's center it, right? That's perfectly center. And now we need to add those dots. So rather than create those dots again, we've got layer nine, which I can just name as dot one and then dot two. And I can select them both, right? And I can drag them to the plus and copy them. And now I can just take those down and I've got two perfectly identical dots right over there. Pretty cool. Now all I need to do is go and get that graphic. So that graphic is this one over here. Now all I need to do is select this graphic and kind of center it a bit better. So let's get this graphic, which will be in my graphics folder, right? And we can see over here, all the different ones. Now I don't really name things. I really should because my gosh, it makes life so much easier if I just started naming things, but we've got bottom ribbon, which I actually did name. So well done me, All right? I've named it over here and now I need to just kind of get it right centered. Perfect. And now let's move belong to you because that's not perfect anymore, right? So let's find belong to you. Now, if you want to select a layer really quickly, you can hold down on command and you see, you just have to click it and it will select that layer. So now that layer is the one that's selected. So belong to you, it jumps to that layer over here. So let's drag this up. And what we need to do is we need to have these graphics. So we're going to put these graphics in and we're going to flip them. But this time, not horizontally, we're going to flip them vertically. So we can see over here, if we just do that same thing, let's grab it over here. Now all we need to do is select these kind of triangles, but what we're gonna do is we're going to do that little trick and we're gonna select it like this and we can see we've selected one and it jumps to layer two, copy seven. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see exactly what we are taking, right? Layer two, copy six, and layer two, copy five. Now that's that whole area, but except we want to copy all of them. So that's the entire thing right now. Obviously I don't wanna move those. I want to duplicate these well, let's put them in a folder first. So again, we can drag them, put them in a folder, and now we've got the arrows, right? And now it's actually really neat. I, should, I don't know why I don't do this more often because you can have folders within folders. Now let's drag this folder and duplicate the folder. And now we have them right over here. Now what we need to do is we can either go to the edge and rotate it like that and wait for it to show up as 180, right? Which is one way of doing it, you know, but it's kind of hard to you get it perfect. But another thing you can do is you can actually go into um, edit, uh, transform, and then flip vertical, and then that should be absolutely fine. Now what we need to do is actually put them in the right area and maybe rotate them a bit. So let's select these three all at once. Let's move them out and let's kind of have them at a better angle so that it's going with the design. I'll make them a bit smaller actually because they don't need to be the same size as the other ones. Perfect, I like that a lot. And now let's do the exact same thing for the other. So let's select those three. Let's angle it up a bit so it's in line. And then let's make it a tad smaller, drag it up. And we are good to go. I think that is pretty, pretty good. So there we have our design. Now, if we wanna compare this design with the original design, let's bring that original design that we were copying. And hopefully, you know, you followed along and you've liked this so far. Um, let me close up all my layers so I can clearly see what I'm working with here. Let's zoom out here a bit. Let's click T-shirt right at the top and let's drag this T-shirt down because this is what I was showing you how to make, right? And let's put that next to it. Now, if we have a look, I think that is pretty spot on. I mean, all we have left to do is add some distressed feel to it. So we're only adding distress feel to the graphics, not to the actual font. So this graphics over here, this is all the graphics you can see. Everything kind of disappears except for the dots and the lines. We are going to put the dots and the lines in the graphics just so that can go as well 
because what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to merge it all into one layer and then you can just simply distress the whole thing at once. So these are the lines. Let's put the lines in the graphics as well. And now when I click the eye tool, the eye kind of icon, all the graphics disappear and you just have some font there. So now let's click the eye. We're going to right click graphics and we're going to click merge group. And this puts it all into one thing. And now what we need to do is we need to go select the, the brush tool, make sure it's set to clear and make sure you know we've got this splatter effect. And now let's 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 hide the black and you can see what's going to happen here, right? It's kind of add these splatters, but it might look like these splatters are white, but they're not white. And I'm going to show you in a second, right? Once I remove that, you can see the splatters are actually see through, right? So when I add a splatter, it's actually see through, which is really cool. Now you don't have to add this splatter because this is not a very good grungy splatter effect, but it, it, it shows you the, the idea. Now let's put the black there so you can see what it looks like. And there we have it, right? It's pretty simple. I'm not a fan of the splatter. I should probably find a better splatter. I've got tons over here. Um, special effect brushes. There are, there are absolutely tons. I probably could have picked a better one. But either way, that's the design over here, right? That's the design. And I think this is a pretty identical design. So that is how you make that design. And there we have it. We can do this same thing with mums, dads, grandpas, papas, pops, anything you anything you can think of, any name. And the only thing you'll really have to change is the bottom bit. Belong to you can just change to, um, you know, brother, um, we have tried to find the best gift for you, but we already have, you know, you or something like that, right? It's, it's we already, you know, whatever it is, but it can relate easily to so many different people. Let me know if you like this type of video and I'll happily make more of them. I felt like it was such fun. I know it was a bit long, but that's usually what happens with a designing video. You just kind of drag on and you get really into it. But hopefully you learn how to actually create a design like this. And if you want to see me do something like this on, you know, another program, maybe even online like Canva, then let me know in the comments down below. And finally, I just want to say a massive thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, you can see my, my subscriber counter over here. I don't know if you can see that, but... I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and I feel like you'll be able to help me. So smash that subscribe button and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in tomorrow's video.